So in this week's episode, I'm gonna show you guys how to take better photos at nighttime. And I'm gonna do that by showing you my process when it comes to taking photos at night and also the settings I use. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do when you're out taking photos at night is you always wanna be on the lookout for interesting looking light. Now in many ways, taking photos at nighttime can be easier than taking photos at daytime. And that's because when you're taking photos at daytime, anything can be a scene. So whichever way you look, whichever way you turn, you can always turn that into a photo. Whereas when you're taking photos at night, you can't take photos of just pitch black and what you do need is light. So what I tend to do is I'll come into an area and I'll seek out the light. I'll just walk around the streets, I'll find where the interesting light is and I'll just work those scenes. So for example, on this most recent photo walk, I went to Soho at nighttime and I found this place here with the uh, green neons and the red light coming from the shop. And I worked this scene for about half an hour to an hour. So I'm taking close-ups, I'm waiting for interesting subjects to walk into frame, I'm taking wide angle shots. So basically, I'm making the most of this interesting light because at nighttime, there isn't as many opportunities to take these kind of interesting photos. Also, it's important to find areas which are well lit at nighttime. So here in London, I like going into Soho, which has a busy nightlife and pretty much into the morning, you'll be able to find interesting scenes, interesting characters and interesting light. So the main thing here is get to an area and seek out the interesting light and work those scenes. Next up, we're talking settings. So that's shutter speed, aperture and ISO. So the main thing with shutter speed is to allow in as much light as possible without making the photo blurry by introducing camera shake into your images. So normally when I'm taking photos at nighttime, I set a minimum shutter speed of 1 60th of a second. And for me, that's slow enough to let in enough light. And uh, at the same time, I can hold the camera steady enough to keep my images sharp. Now with shutter speed, it does depend on the photographer. Some people have a more steadier hand and they can take photos at a 50th of a second or a 40th, whereas some people will need to take a photo at a minimum shutter speed of an 80th and so on. So it does depend on the photographer and you'll want to work out what the slowest shutter speed you can take a photo on without making your photos blurry. So when it comes to ISO, this really depends on the camera you're using. So with the Fujifilm X-Pro2 and the Fujifilm X-T3, I like to keep my uh, photos at below 3200 ISO and ideally below 1600 ISO. And that's because I wanna reduce the amount of noise in the images. Now, this depends on your camera body. Some cameras can take photos perfectly well at 6400 ISO and 12,000 ISO. So it really depends on your own camera and you're gonna to wanna to work out what the max ISO is which you're comfortable with and set it like that. So with my Fujifilm cameras, I set the minimum shutter speed to a 60th of a second and the max ISO to 3200. And normally that allows me to get good looking images which don't have too much noise in them. Finally, when it comes to the aperture, I just go for the fastest which the lens allows me to do. So if I'm using a 35 millimeter F2, I shoot at F2. If it's a 35 millimeter F1.4, I shoot at 1.4. And that's simply because I want the lens to let in as much light as possible when I'm taking photos at night. Okay, so that's the basic settings out of the way. Let's talk about exposure compensation and burst mode. So a setting I use all the time at nighttime is exposure compensation. And with EC, I make sure that the lights in my scene aren't overexposed. So normally I'm dialing down by a stop or two to retain all the details in the highlights. Because when you take photos on digital cameras, if the highlights are blown out, you won't be able to bring them back. You wanna make sure that all the lights in your scene are correctly exposed. And even if the image looks kind of dark, in post, in Lightroom, you'll be able to bring up the shadows and you'll be able to retain all the detail in the lights as well. Next up, if your camera has a burst mode, make sure you turn it on. And that's simply because if you're taking photos at nighttime, you're normally using slower shutter speeds. And if you're taking a photo on a slow shutter speed, you have more chance of bringing in camera shake, so your hand might shake just a bit, and that will cause the entire image to be blurry. So if you shoot a photo on burst mode, and it's taken eight, nine, 10 images per second, one of those photos is gonna be sharp, it's gonna be clean, and you'll be able to use that in post to edit and post to social media after. So if you have a burst mode, make sure you turn it on. So the final step when it comes to shooting at nighttime isn't actually done outdoors, 
is actually done when you're editing the photo. So as I said earlier, when you're taking these photos, they can actually look a bit dark, but as long as you have a pretty new digital camera, and by that I mean a camera from the last five, six years, you'll be able to bring out most of the details from the shadows with no problem. So as you can see from these photos here, I took these all at night, and as you can see, the original photos are pretty dark. In Lightroom, I bring the exposure up a stop or two, and as you can see, the photos look correctly exposed, and you can see it in this photo here, and finally, in this photo here. So I recently uploaded a video where I edit this specific photo. So if you wanna see my editing process when it comes to nighttime photos, you guys can uh, check the link here and I'll stick it at the top. And I'll also put the link down below so you guys can check out that episode too. But yeah, that's the main steps when it comes to taking photos at nighttime. I hope you guys all learned something from this episode. And if you have any questions regarding taking photos at night, just drop them down below. You guys can do me a massive favor by hitting that thumbs up button. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button too. A massive thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.